I'm David Cloud. I'm a senior program associate with Vera's Substance Use and Mental Health Program. The crime bill set into motion a wave of punitive laws in prison growth that has, in fact, manifested in a public health crisis. It's one of the unforeseen um, consequences of mass incarceration that sometimes goes unnoticed. To understand um, the public health implications of mass incarceration, I think it's important to unpack the cycle of what happens. Um, the first of those is to understand the profile, the health profile of people who are incarcerated. So they have enormously high burden of disease, um, not only higher rates of mental illness, substance use, but also infectious disease, chronic disease, that generally are much greater than we see in the rest of the population. So we have to think that the conditions of confinement inside correctional facilities are not good for people's health. Um, they're very overcrowded, they're violent places. Unfortunately, the quality of care that people receive, even though it's constitutionally mandated, is generally inadequate. Um, and as a result, a lot of people can often deteriorate, um, and especially for people with mental health needs, that deterioration can often trigger punishment. And this approach where they might be likely to end up in, in segregation or in just in situations that, that are not going to help them regain their mental health and, and be in a good state. Um, and at the same time, we have to think that not everyone who goes to prison just goes away. They, they come back. 99% like of them will return to communities. And too often, what happens when they go in correctional environments, while some will receive access to health care, we have a, do a very poor job of handing them back off to the community. So the public health implications of mass incarceration extend beyond the people who are directly exposed to incarceration. Um, they permeate also into the communities and into families. But we have to think, this, think of this issue on a much broader scale. And in public health, we often talk about the social determinants of health. And what that means, we have to unpack what incarceration has done, not just in people's access to health care, but to employment, to housing, um, to social benefits, to economic mobility, education. All of those things come together to really define what makes a healthy community. And we know there's a ton of research to show us that mass incarceration has made it much harder for people to get jobs, much harder for people to sustain housing, and all of those things combined, we know, can have negative impacts on people's morbidity and mortality. The Affordable Care Act does, in fact, create a lot of opportunities um, to advance criminal justice reforms. Um, most specifically, the ACA represents one of the biggest expansions of mental health and substance use treatments in our nation's history. Um, there's a lot of talk around the nation about the importance of Medicaid expansions stronger requirements to provide a wider range of benefits for behavioral health services, to channel that, sh that sh stream of funding um, and those extra benefits to build capacity in the community to prevent people from relying on criminal justice systems to, to, to provide behavioral health services that they do. Um, so the ACA represents an important opportunity to scale back the extent to which we rely on jails courts and prisons to serve as our default behavioral health providers. And at the same time, I think there's a huge opportunity to use the ACA to um, improve reentry, to improve things at the back door of the system as well. Uh, so the pursuit of public health and public safety are not mutually exclusive. And I think that it takes both justice and health systems working together to recognize the value in pursuing both of those things at the same time. For a long time, Vera has been focused on the intersection of public health and criminal justice systems. And this dates back to um, you know, Vera's foundings and, and interest in you know, the intersection between different systems. Um, I've been working for the Substance Use and Mental Health Program for the past few years, and all of the work that we do depends on collaboration between a multitude of systems. It's the courts, it's the jails, it's the health providers, um, different levels of government. Um, and for the past couple of years, we've kind of, we've been paying attention to this just wave of activity that's going on in an, all around the country that's, you know, trying to build this synergy between criminal justice reform and health reform and recognizing um, where those motivations and opportunities overlap and maximizing them kind of in this socio-political environment that we're in now. Um, so uh, Vera has been stewing on this idea for quite some time and, and just a 
about a week, we're going to launch a new initiative that I'm leading called Justice Reform for Healthy Communities. And I think we're starting, there's a kind of a consensus building that we've been way too punitive in the past. And now there's an opportunity to rethink our values, um, the metrics we use to define success. So we have to think beyond just recidivism. We have to think, do the programs these our institutions set up, do they help people get jobs? Do they help them um, get back to um, obtaining a college degree, a high school diploma, and do they connect them to the health system? Do they enroll them in, um, do they help them get health insurance? I mean, I think we really have to think more critically um, about where our money is spent and what we get out of it. And I think this um, presents a huge opportunity for us to open up that conversation.